Hi everyone. So this is the next thing we are already talking. So we have already discussed about how to do the file upload and validations uh, and a custom decorators to expose the file upload on the Swagger. Now what is interesting thing is now we are going to either write a common adapter so that you can upload to AWS, Azure or maybe another uh, cloud platform because all these objects store cloud platform works in the similar way. Either your uh, either your Azure Blob or AWS S3 buckets, they provide two interfaces. Either they, that bucket is private or public, but once the file is uploaded, they kind of return the same set of response, the URL, the, the unique name and all these things. So either you can uh, use a common adapter so that you can do upload on AWS, Azure or GCP. But let's stop there. First, we will try to understand how to upload to AWS S3, AWS Azure and maybe GCP. Let's cover the AWS and Azure first and then maybe you can write your own custom module co comma custom adapter where you just need to provide an environment variable. Okay, the, the cloud provider is AWS, cloud provider is Azure, cloud provider is uh, GCP and the upload will happen accordingly without, I mean it's seamless. Uh, you don't need to change any configurations. First, obviously you need to provide the uh, access key ID and secret key for the AWS similarly for at different credentials for the Azure and same for GCP. But you don't need to change the code by writing a common adapter. So first we will take a look on how to upload on Azure, Azure Blob, then AWS S3 bucket and how it really works. And you, it can be a single file upload or it can be a multiple file upload because you can also pass a multiple file through the controller. So this topic is always uh, very, really very important because we are uploading, so it's stream of the data. Sometimes you also download. So how you can stream the data and make the download available to the client side. On uploading on AWS S3 is really tricky because there are two different ways of uploading to S3. One is you have S3 bucket and you just uh, use the controller and you just upload the file. Another is you can just say AWS S3 API is okay, I'm going to upload this particular file, okay. Then AWS S3 will give you the pre-signed URL. Then your front end is just doing upload similarly, similarly just doing a put call, right, to that URL. So back end is just giving you the pre-signed URL and rest all the things of upload is happening through the front end because sometimes the file is very big all those scenarios you can just do us you can just hand over the upload to the front end otherwise such a simple file upload you take the file through the apis uh, you got the file stream in the api backend and just upload it to s3 bucket so first try to start with very simple and then we'll just make it complex so let's cover two more videos on aws and azure and then we'll move to the next topic on nestgs advanced series so what the first approach is talking Okay, you have a Nest.js API is running on the server. Maybe it's Lambda or serverless. I mean, either it's a serverless or maybe it's running on server. You do the file upload through the Postman or Exios client. You send the file stream and it will upload the object to the server. The only issue with this is, let's say your file size is big in the GB. Then obviously the Node.js needs to collect that much memory to process that file and stream that file to the AWS cloud. Okay, so what is the solution for the big files? Uh, you can just generate a signed URL, just like just uh, maybe a HTTP request upload URL. Nest.js will talk to AWS S3 APIs. Okay, I just need a signed URL for the so that I can upload from the web client, from the browser or from the client side JavaScript code, either Angular, React or Next.js. This will give you the signed URL and through the signed URL, you can just simply do the post or maybe put to the, by sending your, the whole file object to that URL because that URL is signed and it's, uh, first of all, that URL is signed. I mean, it's not just a normal URL. You don't need a AWS credentials to upload the file to AWS Once, because the signed URL has been generated by AWS after accessing the credentials at the server side, but now signed URL is at the client side and I'm free to upload the file using that. So both these approaches are popular. Like uh, if there are heavy files, you can just choose the second approach, more secure one. If the small file, single file you want to upload in the object, then you can just choose the, the first approach. So let's talk about the first approach. 
so let's start our file upload journey and uh, first what we will do is we will follow this approach we will just write a controller where we can upload a file okay and then that file as a stream buffer should be able to upload to AWS S3 bucket and then we will use the second approach so what all prerequisites we need for this you need AWS account that is must because we are dealing with AWS you need to have one administrator user then download the access key and a secret key because we are going to do the demo locally so you need to configure access key and secret key and you need to populate them on the process.env for the node.js and then write a controller and service and that service is going to use AWS SDK this is the library right like for python we have boto3 library similarly for node.js AWS SDK library is there that helps us to deal with any of the AWS component either EC2, CloudFormation you can do anything with AWS SDK it's a library to talk to AWS resources when you have access key and a secret key through CLI or through code so this is the first approach we are going to do then second approach we will try to get the signed URL and do the upload so how it looks like I mean it's not going to be that complex we just going to create the AWS S3 client and this is how we can get this is where we are creating the constructor of client and then we have to initialize the client with all the credentials of AWS you need to specify the region and the credentials in the credentials you need to pass the access key ID and secret access key that you will download from your AWS account for the administrator user so once you have the client now the things are simple you will get the file and your original file name and the file uh, trimming the spaces this is the parameter object you will construct okay this is my bucket this is my file key and this is the body I mean it's indirectly going to trigger a REST API call to S3 AWS S3 because this is how it works because he we need to upload it so and then here we are doing this dot client dot upload and we are passing all the params and then we are stringifying it we are actually promisifying it so you don't need to do a wait and all it's already a promise then you can just return simply upload response and it's already a sync method so this is typically how it looks like similarly you can write a get method where you will be passing the key and based on the key you if you have access key and secret key you can actually download the file so it's like a simple demo uh, we are going to do you can build your own file manager service where you can allow users to upload file download the file you can have even a database table to manage these key and the values so like okay this is the once you upload you will get the response object you can also store that in the database respective to the key okay like what is the file name what is the key name for that file and what is the s3 response for that file you can store it and it can be a simply a file manager service so before downloading any file you will first check okay do we have the key in the database records if yes then go to s3 and talk to s3 and download the file so this is my aws account uh, let's see we can create a user here i'm logged in as a root uh, root user and we can create one administrator here i mean i will just create a simply one administrator or we can just use this sandbox user go to the security credentials and here you will get the access key id and a key value pair you need to download so here we can just generate create access key and secret key for command line you don't need to specify next and done so it will download it i got the secret key i got the access key So this is how you got the user access key and a secret key and this user permission already has administrator access that means he can do upload and download to your S3 buckets and here we can also create S3 bucket go to service and go to S3 here scalable st storage in the cloud and you can create a new bucket here so we just need to fill up a simple form we will talk about the permissions which you want to give to this particular bucket so this is important here what I'm saying is block all public access because this bucket is private I should be able to access the content of the bucket programmatically through the AWS credentials otherwise you cannot just 
directly go to the link and you cannot just download the file okay so i am just blocking all the public access rest you can just keep, keep default what is the encryption types and tags so i have to change the bucket name because the bucket name already exists for the sandbox so this is the bucket i have created and here we can also check the bucket policies block all public access on and this is the bucket policy uh, you can also populate any bucket policy which you have onto this s3 bucket so our bucket is configured you can also paste uh, cross origin configurations like i will just use the default template for that i can edit it and paste I mean it will allow you to do all these different methods on the AWS S3 APIs like getting the bucket, creating a, a object inside a bucket or updating a object inside a bucket. Okay. Now let's start our coding. We are going to create our controller and service and access this AWS S3 using AWS SDK and we are going to... Hi everyone. So this is our plan. I mean uh, we need to build these three APIs restaurant upload one file many files and custom validation i mean one file and custom validation we have already done i will also talk about how can you upload multiple files together okay so let's get started these are the three apis which we are building this is the one file which is just ex accepting one file object right you can just choose one file and you just send it and it should be able to return you the response now there are other APIs like many files. Here you should be able to pass the multiple files together. There is a multiple files means multiple images that's based on your validations. But, but here we can create a custom decorator which will allow from the swagger to upload a multiple files. So here I can choose uh, multiple images and I will just do the send. So here it is right now it is making an actual API call to AWS S3 and doing the upload. And this is the thing which we are going to talk in this video, how you can integrate AWS SDK to upload file to the S3 bucket. We have already set up the S3 bucket and we have already configured AWS account like you just need to create one admin user and get the access key and a secret key because you need three things. The bucket name, AWS access key and AWS secret key to run the whole operation. Now the, this is the bucket name we have tksharma.io and this is for custom validations custom validation which we have created by ourselves. Uh, so this is just a simple upload test it is just returning the file now if you look into the code what we are going to implement we are going to use the same thing file interceptors and all so this is the one file and this is going to upload only single file okay so here you can see use interceptor file interceptor file and this is the same decorator we are using and this is the validation we are passing inside it and we are allowing only jpg and png images and we are just returning the file but what happens is if what if you want to process the file so you upload the file now the uploaded file you wanted to process and send it to the aws s3 so here we are using another decorator upload files when you want to upload multiple files and here you can see line number 28 we are accepting the type array and inside array objects we are passing type and the format binary this is a custom decorator which is really helpful for swagger now let's see how the upload file controller looks like here we have created a many files route and inside this we are specifying all these parameters like upload files file parameter and interceptor here you will see the difference files interceptor it's not file interceptor it's file interceptor i was debugging this and i was not able to receive the multiple files and the issue was i was using file interceptor it should be files interceptor when you are passing multiple files and then uh, here we are using upload files at the rate uh, at line 202 upload files instead of uploaded file okay because it's an array uh, of files we are sending so it's uploaded files upload files and then here we are just console log that okay these are the different files we have received and uh, then we will just pass it to the S3. So validation with the multiple files is little tricky, but I tried this approach that how can we validate uh, using the same mechanism when there are multiple files are being passed. 
So here I'm using the same uh, parse uh, file pipe builder and specified the file type validator and the size validator. Here I'm passing the PNG and one file is the MOV file, video file. Okay, and I'm trying to submit. So we are getting here the validation failed. This is what we want. So once you receive the files, what we want, we want to send it to the service method. And this is file is nothing but an array of files which has been uploaded. So this is the method we are going to write. So upload file results like this will contain all the results of all the uploaded files. Here we can run a simple for loop of all the files, const file of all the files and then start uploading one file one by one. So here const file. Um, here we are going to use uh, this service method. First of all, let's get the file name. What we can do just we can prefix the UUID for each and every file name that will give us the unique file name to every file because if you are uploading the same file again it will get the unique file name so to get a unique name we are just prefixing the UUID string and here we are going to call upload S3 and here we will pass the parameters file.buffer uh, key uh, what is the file name and the file body and this upload S3 is nothing but it is using SDK AWS SDK to upload the file it is taking three argument file key and original name now keep adding the file response in this array like file response result we are getting from SDK and then we just return the file file uploaded uh, result and then success true because this file has been successfully uploaded now we'll come to this service method where we are actually uploading and what this AWS S3 service looks like so here we are creating a AWS S3 service inside a lib AWS S3 dot module dot ts AWS S3 dot service dot ts these two files because here we are going to create a service and the simple module I mean just to cre create some reusable piece of code so this service can be added inside a domain module and can be this service AWS S3 service can be used so first we need to create a client S3 client this dot client equal to new S3 and just pass your arguments like okay what is the region and uh, what, what are the credentials credential takes two argument access key id and a secret key these two parameters will populate through process.env this access key id and secret key and now we can define all the methods like async upload async uh, get file or get signed url these all different methods we can create in this s3 service so let's add this upload file method which takes three argument file okay the the body key is the unique key and the file name is the original name of the file now we are just using this AWS SDK to upload the file we already got the S3 client so it, we need to pass three argument in the params bucket key and the file which we want to upload I mean the, the body of the file which is the file buffer and then you can just use S3 client to upload it here we are doing this dot client dot upload passing the params and promisified it and then we can get the signed URL from it so once you have uploaded the file I also want to download or get the signed URL signed URL is a special URL through which you can download the object because this bucket is not public even if you get the, the, the object URL you cannot download it because it will send you unauthorized so you can create a pre-signed URLs for the S3 objects that has an expiry so you can set an expiry and you can make the object downloadable so here we are creating get signed url we are passing key and original string and here these are the params it is also taking the same argument bucket key and expires and it will just generate you the signed url which you can just return through this upload response and once you hit that signed url you should also be able to download the object these are the access key and a secret key so we need to set these environment variables aws bucket name aws access key and AWS secret access now I can just restart the application this is AWS S3 module having one service I will add this module inside my domain module so I can start using uh, the service AWS S3 upload service because the, the domain module uh, restaurant service is using this AWS S3 service so we need to add this dependency inside imports for the domain module and then AWS S3 service can be used now let's start the application and check if it works so we have started the application I have actually mocked this authorization because we are not dealing with that so here you can see I am executing this and this is the URL I am getting so 
you can choose any other image file execute it it is going to be uploaded to the your s3 bucket and you are also getting this signed url if you hit on this signed url you should also be able to download the object and this is the object has been downloaded i can show you how this image look like this is what i have uploaded so this is how it works you can upload one file many files and all the file validation stuffs are here you can upload multiple files like this and it will return you two objects inside an array so this is overall about how we can integrate uh, nestjs with the aws s3 and how we can do the file upload single file upload or multiple file upload same way you can actually do the upload to the aws or azure or gcp you just need to write their services do the integration and that's it thanks everyone thanks for watching